Hi there, this is Dr. Samurai, a professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. The topic of today's my minute lecture is Mr. Vincent Basquiano. Let's start with the you know uh, general information on Mr. Basquiano. Okay, so let's begin with the today's thug profile 27. Uh, Mr. Basquiano is the boss and the acting boss of Bonanno family, which is one of the New York Five families. The boss before uh, Mr. Uh, Vincent was Joseph Massino, and he was arrested, and uh, he was in incarcerated. Mr. Basquiano became captain from captain to the acting acting boss which means he was acting outside for mr massino who was incarcerated he is now allegedly in incarcerated because of the murder of a guy who threatened to kill one of his sons, also uh, killed, I think uh, it was not the maid member, he was just an associate who was uh, drugged up and uh, breaking rules of the Bonanno family. So he killed those two and also while he was in jail, there was a chance for him to talk to uh, Mr. Uh, Massino as an uh, acting boss right you I mean that means right under the Massino he offered to uh, kill judge in charge of Mr. Massino's uh, trial do you understand this so allegedly Mr. Vincent killed the one who threatened to kill his son and killed the one who broke the rules of the family because he was always using the drugs and also he offered to help his boss Massino by killing the judge who is ruling the trial of his boss so for these three cases he was sentenced death first but uh, you know later it was commuted live sentence so now he is in live sentence for those alleged you know uh, crimes he is said to have committed but the truth is not known y you know surprising thing is why did the prosecuting side no, Mr. Uh, you know, Basquiano offered to kill his ruling uh, uh, judge. Understand? Because he was only talking to uh, Massino. So only two people knew Mr. Basquiano offered to kill the judge. Why the prosecuting side came to know? the fact that he offered to kill because the boss Massino himself turned over to be on the side of prosecution this is the first time ever that the that the boss of the New York five family became witness to provide information for prosecuting side it was a very shameful incident for all the mafia world that the boss of the family became witness against the mafia family itself and uh, his and his nickname is Beanie Gorgeous which came from the name of the beauty parlor that uh, his wife was managing at the time but also it came along with uh, his good looking like some movie actors for being a real gangster okay 
So let's get into the details of what happened. As I have said, the boss Massino turned over to be on prosecuting side as witness. I think he was on uh, bad uh, diabetes, but still, compared with the, you know, Mr. Torio Amuso or Carmine Persico, both died with uh, their creeds and, uh, you know, uh, obeying or melting the law of Mafia world. This uh, Massino guy did the perfectly opposite, highly shameful things as the boss. He put the wire on his body when he went to talk to Mr. Vincent when both were in jail. I think there was a chance to talk to each other in the yard of jail in New York, okay? At that time, Mr. Basquiano clearly mentioned the murder of the associate who was, you know, uh, using drugs all the time. So, because of this wire and information, he was arrested first, okay? The information that he offered to kill the judge for uh, Massino was not uh, actually recorded on wire. It was uh, word by mouth by Massino to uh, prosecutors. So it was not recorded. So, you know, it was not as solid as being recorded. As you can imagine, you know, uh, killing the, you know, those officials on the prosecuting side is leading to uh, highest punishment. So, one time, Basquiano received death sentence, but now it has turned into life sentence, okay? From here, let's get into part two of Mr. Vincent that I know. To be honest with you, I have a uh, long time uh, correspondences with uh, Mr. Vincent because outside of him being the boss of the Bonanno family after, you know, Massino turned over, his personality was uh, straightforward and highly uh, respectable, which I believe those correctional officers taking care of Mr. Basquiano all know. He respects others, you know. So people who meet with him start to change inside in terms of the attitude toward uh, Vincent. I think in total we corresponded uh, like six years or so mainly talked about uh, spiritual things. When I contacted him first, it was that time uh, just uh, when he was transferred to uh, Florence, Colorado, you know, that uh, highest uh, federal prison. Some of you might know, but uh, uh, in order to be included, the people who can uh, visit uh, inmates in uh, federal prison. They must have a uh, connections and contacts before they were arrested. So there was no possibility for me and for my application to be approved. And I heard his niece was also declined as a person who is allowed to see Mr. Basquiano. In, in short, super famous thugs with respect, okay? Super famous thug, you know, uh, basically dropped in Pelican Bay if he did the things in California or in Florence ADX if he did a federal crime. Either Pelican Bay, the highest in California, or Florence ADX at the federal, you know, uh, level. So uh, it was uh, very logical that he, 
he as the head of one of the five family was uh, transferred to Florence, Colorado. And I think uh, I would like you to know that uh, even uh, uh, state prisons all over the United States, they model how to manage their institution on prisons in California. Because California is the mecca of criminal or crimes. So the way they manage prisons called the uh, Calif CDCO, California Department of Correction and Rehabilitation, C, California D, Department of C, Correction and Rehabilitation, all CDCR, okay? California is usually the model that uh, all the rest of the uh, state prisons outside of the California model on. I would like you to know, you know, California is the most advanced in terms of crimes. Before he was transferred to uh, Florence, Colorado, he was intentionally kept in New York State Institution. I think it was for three years or so. You know why? Because at the state level, they can pretty much do whatever they would like to do. I'm talking about, uh, you know, prison side. Because the, as long as the governor and the uh, ward of the prison say, okay, they can do pretty much whatever they want to do as they are pleased. Okay? So, I think they wanted to get as much information as possible from Mr. Basquiano on what exactly he did. But he didn't cry and he didn't speak, you know? He was a tough kid when he was still a kid, okay? And he used to tell me uh, in the first uh, couple of uh, letters that, you know, uh, he usually share his dinners with uh, his uh, rat friends, you know, on a tray put directly on the concrete floor. Can you imagine? So I'm not sure whether he was coughed or not, but uh, he had to eat directly from the tray put on the con concrete floor with the uh, visiting you know, real rat, you know, animals, okay? He, he used to tell me that, you know, laughing. Uh, I, here I would like to tell you, what is the difference between those who become the top of the uh, organization and those who uh, sort of become rat become become rat means who uh, turned over to betray on the organization he was the member of what's the difference between the boss and the normal regular members who could turn over and the answer to this question is based upon my experiences with the heads of uh, mafia families and the heads of so many prison gangs those guys who are in charge of organizations top guys they never cry whatever kind of sentence they get whatever torture they get they never cry one guy said when he was outside, still outside, you know, most people started to back off when they started to see blood, like a shot and stab and stuff. But the person that I was corresponding to said, seeing the blood is the start of his fight. Okay? So there's the big difference, you know, most stop at the blood. But, uh, you know, the top level guy start from seeing the blood and they never ever back off like Massino you know no matter how long sentence they get 100 years 200 years you know uh, 20 lifetimes doesn't matter they just stick with Omelta that's uh, what uh, Mr. 
Amuso and Mr. Presco did, wasn't it? That, you know, I'm not talking about crimes or their business because I don't know exactly what they did. But as a person, I have high respect for their, you know, honor to keep their words as a boss, you know. That one point separates whether you can be a boss or you're going to be just another guy, another members who just envy becoming boss okay so mr vincent was placed in a isolated cell which didn't receive either sunlight and uh, not so hygienely clean and uh, he implied there was some kind of a uh, you know uh, physical measure to uh, push him to speak you know on what exactly he did but he didn't cry okay why could he do such thing why could he maintain such a strength because his life has been that way when he was little kid he had you know uh, both mother and father but I think his father was a little bit, you know, was strained. Although he didn't drink, he didn't like his wife to uh, pay too much attention to kids. He just wanted to occupy his wife. Uh, that Mr. Vincent could easily understand as a, as a boy. So starting around 15 years old, I think uh, he went out to live on his own by fighting on his own. You know, his physical strength, street smartness was the only thing he can depend on to survive since 15 years old. He was a tough kid, although he is uh, very handsome and uh, very thin, you know, when he was uh, young. But on the other hand, he hated those who bully on the weak. So there was a guy who was being bullied at school. So he casually saved him from the bullies, right? But uh, that the bullied kid happened to be related to some big shot in mafia family. So in a picture, filled with the tough mafioso of like 50 years old average. There's only Mr. Basquiano, you know, high school kid in the picture. It is said that, uh, you know, uh, police officers in charge of, uh, you know, uh, mafia activities and stuff, they keep taking the pictures, right? Uh, they look at each other, say that, who, who the hell is this uh, young boy? you know, mingling with the, all the mafioso because he saved, I think uh, it was the son of one of the, you know, uh, high-level gangsters that he saved. So uh, because of that, he was uh, welcome to that family, okay? I remember now, I have never been arrested, okay, either in Japan or in America. Although I am a counselor and uh, I visited so many people whom I corresponded with in America. Uh, you know, uh, I myself have never been arrested. But still, I think I know better than uh, what uh, ordinary people know about uh, correctional systems and stuff. Most of the big shots, they are human beings too. So when they hear Florence ADX, they a little bit get nervous, not knowing what is happening there. Okay, because there's no higher institution than Florence Supermax. So they automatically expect like uh, oh do i have to fight again and stuff like that but uh, it's not like that actually uh they are placed uh, in isolated cell you know and each cell has a shower of course they have like time limit material wise the cell 
of Florence, Colorado is like a beautiful hotel, you know, compared with some of the terrible uh, facilities in, in local areas, right? It was right after he was transferred to Florence when I started to contact him, right? And I remember he said to me clearly that uh, every day he wakes up, he sees his face and the mirror in his cell. And as I have said, he never cried and never spoke, never ratted on anything, right? So he kept saying to himself, when he saw his face and the mirror, every time he confirmed that he was never betraying to himself. Also, he said, he every day confirmed that when I don't see myself, my face in the mirror is when I die. That was his creed. He already uh, made up his mind, resolution to die with his creeds. You know, uh, whatever happens and however long he will be in the cell. And he confirmed his creeds every day. He saw his face in his room miller. And I still remember uh, the phrases he kept saying very often in his letter was to, uh, to us, he never used the word mafia or mafioso. Or he never admitted he was a mafia. I mean, as a matter of fact, nobody admitted they are mafia. Amusio? No. Mr. Persico? No. Mr. Vincent? No. Nobody admitted they are mafioso. They, you know, what they kept saying was there's no such a thing as mafia, okay? And to me, too, okay? And I just uh, get along with it. He, what he said to me was like this. To us, shake hand means everything. Once we shake hand with each other officially, that is everything. And that is the sign that uh, we will never betray on each other. So shaking hand is everything in our world. That's what uh, uh, Mr. Basquiano told me. But he never said he was a mafia or mafia boss or mafioso. Never. He just said us. I, uh, uh, including other type of people, I never try. I just try my best not to uh, affect their punishment or their sentence the best I can because that is not my business. My business is get the information to make the society truly safer by not using forces. Okay, I'm talking about the nature and constitution of human society. And to get the hint is my purpose. That's why I am communicating with them. Though I did not mention things like that, I still remember that uh, when Massino betrayed, I could take it. But when Dominic sold me, it was many more times tougher. Dominic is a guy whom Mr. Basquiano took care of like his real brother. Dominic was nobody, right? And as I might have said, to become made member, the fully registered member, okay? To become made member of Mafia family is very difficult because every, you know, boss of the five family has to approve on the person. But uh, Dominic was made, I think, uh, three months after they met each other. Six months or so, that's what I heard. He became a captain. So Mr. Basquiano took really good care of Mr. Dominic. You know, from zero through uh, made man to the captain within one year for sure. And uh, when I talked to uh, uh, Mr. Vincent's uh, lovely wife, Angela, okay, 
She said、uh, she was、uh, in the car when they first met each other. And she was watching everything from inside the car. He, what she told me was Dominic was acting as if Mr. Vincent was、uh, his、uh, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, the closest you know,、uh, loving person. Wife can tell the chemistry that is happening between you know, people. You agree with me, right? So、uh, Angela told me that. So, I think、uh, Dominic was, you know, performing an act, great act, to uh, be uh, an ideal, you know, a person for Mr. Basquiano, who was known to be very tough, you know,、mm-hmm. and、uh, very good at uh, uh, operating business. By the way, Mr. Basquiano was、uh, angry when I implied.、Uh, Uh, criminal you know, business and things like that. Mr. Basquiano told him he was only into、uh, you know,、uh, non criminal business, but he was still making a lot of money, you know,、uh, starting with、uh, re- uh, real estate. So I think it was, you know, I would like to believe he was telling me the truth.、Uh, most of the business he was into. Was re- legitimate business, not illegal. Here, I would like to emphasize I said the word made man, right? As、uh, being、uh, officially registered full member of Mafia family. Being a made man and being a not made man, just associate, it's like a thousand to one difference, you know? Becoming a made man, like I said, you have to open, you, you, you have to wait for the timing that happens every a few years or every several years, not every year. You have to wait for the timing for the bosses to open the registration notebook for made members. And they all have to agree. They all have to approve on their you know,、uh, candidate. Becoming made means all those bosses approved. He forms a、uh, official、uh, business group that can do、uh, what they are good at. Does that make sense? You know, to. Be a made man means with him at the center, there pops up another official business circle in the mafia family that everybody approved. Once you become a maid, nobody can touch you, nobody can kill you, nobody can hit you unless you get、uh, approvals from bosses. You kill someone who is made without、uh, approvals from the big bosses, you will get killed for sure. You see those scenes in mafia movies many times, like、uh, Goodfellas, you know, for example. So, to be a made member is to become untouchable in the area he moves, he is the boss. He's the movie star. Everybody bow down on him. That is why to be made man is the dream for all those Italian American guys who live in violent business. You know, they all dream about becoming a made man or made guy or to be made. Clearly, I think.、Uh, It is more worthy, worthier than becoming a professor, I think, in terms of the power. You know, they have humongous power once they make the business center. You know, all the bad guys, they have to、uh, do things around him or by getting permission from some made man if they do.、Uh, Criminal business. Okay, so again, made guy is a star 
in a violent society. And like I said, that Dominic was made in three months, and then within uh, six months or so, he became a captain. All because of Mr. Basquiano's push, because he had that much say. I read that Massino didn't like. Massino didn't like Mr. Basquiano was uh, upping, I mean, uh, promoting people that he didn't directly know to be a made member, you know. But uh, Mr. Basquiano did it with uh, Mr. Dominic anyway. Dominic Sicale. Sicale. So he did everything to Dominic. They did business together all the time, right? But uh, once Mr. Basquiano was arrested, he p provided all the information he knew. Because he knew everything. They did business together all the time, right? To get lighter sentences. He talked about everything. Moreover, after he was released from prison, maybe it was like five years, several years after, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the exact number of the years he served, but he upped his video on YouTube and there he was ranting about Mr. Basquiano, although he didn't clearly say the name. There he says things like, those you know, those big guys who are now in prisons are like dinosaurs who doesn't have flexibility to deal with the situation. I am different. I can change. I have that flexibility depending on the situation. I don't always try to, you know, show I'm a tough guy. I can be soft dealing with the other people but those big guys can do that that's why i am out here now and they are still inside that's the contents of the youtube video he up i just could not believe he could do things like that okay let's say i admit there were opportunities that uh, Mr. Basquiano requested him to do so many things, you know, for him when he was still outside. I am talking about a parable story, okay? Parable story. But, uh, you know, Dominic was raised from zero, from nobody to capo in, in that uh, violent society, you know, by the by all the efforts by Mr. Basquiano. He owes his life. So all those, uh, you know, uh, difficult asks, he was supposed to do, don't you think so? In my case, nobody raised me to be a professor. I, you know, was promoted based on my own research and uh, my own uh, skills and uh, you know uh, things like that but uh, if somebody if somebody promoted me i think uh, i would uh, feel like i owed everything that uh, this uh, dominic obviously didn't feel appreciative to mr basquiano to hear him saying and calling him like dinosaur can you do that I can't. And uh, Mr. Vincent one time told me he happened to uh, pass Dominic's father when he was on an escalator inside a you know, New York jail, I think. All his father said to Mr. Basquiano was, I am very sorry. And uh, uh, his father said, if I was out, I would kill my son by my own hands. That's uh, what uh, Dominic's father said to Mr. Basquiano. Being old, him being part of those, uh, you know, uh, society, I think, whether associate or not, he knew what it should be. What his son did to 
Mr. Basquiano was completely against Omelta, which at least Dominic's father knew, and he apologized to Mr. Basquiano for his son. And uh, Mr. Basquiano used to tell me, uh, you know, when you uh, when you judge other people, don't ever judge the person based on what he says, but judge him on how he acts and what he does. Looking back, Dominic used to treat his mother terribly, and I should have known better than that at the time. That's what uh, Mr. Basquiano told me. But, you know, nobody knows Dominic. Nobody remembers the name of the Dominic, but the name Basquiano, people remember as an honorable guy. This is the difference, you know. Dominic didn't climb up on his own. It was all owing to Mr. Basquiano. Mr. Basquiano climbed up completely on his own, you know, helping the bullied kids, associating with, the, you know, uh, those gangsters when he was still high school kids, and, uh, you know, he did his business and he became a made man and uh, he was so powerful and making a lot of money on legit business and that rumor reached Massino so he became captain when Massino was arrested you know when the boss is incarcerated he is always looking for someone whom he can trust and I think uh, there was nobody other than, you know, Mr. Vincent, you know, that uh, he thought he could uh, count on whether he liked it or not. Okay, so everybody, everybody knows Mr. Vincent and he became even a part of uh, a lime of uh, some rap music and stuff like that. But uh, nobody knows the name Dominic. That's the difference, okay? And uh, I don't, what I'm talking about, uh, their business, I don't I don't have anything to do with their business, but uh, the how to live as a samurai, I think I know a little bit, okay? Having the DNA of zero fighter plane country, okay? We and I would never do that if I think I owe myself to someone. I wouldn't do that. You know, that's against my honor. He's now, Lawrence ADX is the highest in the federal system, right? And the next is Florence Florence High, which is right next to Fl Florence ADX. And now he is at uh, some uh, prison in Kentucky State. You know, through his letters, it looks like uh, some youngsters from the same uh, neighborhood in New York, uh, although he didn't ask, they are now guarding Mr. Basquiano as soldiers. He told me cellmate is a very good cook and he cooks very uh, tasty food, you know, on Sunday and stuff. So it sounded good knowing that uh, terrible life he went through you know, in New York. You know, all those other bosses did. Mr. Basquiano walked alone in a yard on the very first day he was transferred to this uh, Kentucky prison, you know. I remember one time I asked him this uh, interesting question, if you had been with uh, Mr. Gotti. He goes, if uh, I had been under John, he used the John, okay? My life could have been very different. That's what he said. You know, I, I kind of uh, connoted that uh, knowing both go straight forward, right? They may be too strong, but they never betray each other. And uh, Mr. Basquiano was like younger Mr. Gotti that I know very well 
So if they were together, you know, they must have been very powerful and made their, you know, organization or whatever it is very, very powerful and untouchable, I believe. What I thought was about uh, Mr. Massino. It sounded like Mr. Basquiano already, you know, forgave Mr. Massino. He became a rat. So, I think there was a time when he felt happy with uh, Mr. Massino. I still remember uh, Angela, the wife of uh, Mr. Basquiano, told me, you know, they usually spend hours every weekend. Hours they spend together. I mean, Mr. Basquiano and Mr. Massino eat an Italian at the restaurant that uh, Massino owned. And they talk about the many things on how to operate a business and stuff like that. And because she was his wife, she had to be there too, you know. So based upon those things, I don't think uh, Mr. Basquiano is not regretting or not at least angry at his ex-boss Massino but to me there's one thing I can tell you as a social pathologist basic personality and lifestyle is made at a certain stage of their life like I am a teacher right so given lectures in front of the uh, students, however many or however small it is. It is like a breathing air. I never get nervous speaking because I've been doing that for over 30 years or 35 years now. You know, to take care of kids, I'm not a god or anything, but uh, uh, when they come up to me asking for help as a student I would do my best at least I will try to do my best to support you know that's my identity you know and my personality and I think Mr. Massino's personality was a businessman like he started out to be a peddler not actually peddling, but uh, you know that uh, silver shiny uh, uh, van that carries uh, uh, foods and drinks and stuff like that. Massino started his his life as peddler, as a you know a seller. I mean, as a merchant, he did it for some years and that is the basis of his personality I th selling things smiling to customers not like you know uh, Mr. Jangari you know who was a born gangster or not like Mr. Basquiano who never backed down in uh, whatever disadvantageous situation Massino was just a merchant. So I think I read this or I, I, I heard it from somebody. But uh, I hear that uh, Massino couldn't even talk in front of Mr. Gotti because he was scared of Mr. Jangati. You know, this is the difference. And this is what I mean by identity. Basquiano and Jangati were gangsters you know but uh, Massino and uh, ex uh, Gambino boss Castellano was just a businessman never you know a street fighter or anything they were all into money only they have certain power once they are put on a certain position of power and people follow what they say to a certain degree but when they were pushed into the corner that's the time their true identity came up 
when Massino was pushed into the corner to live the rest of his life in the prison, you know, with his diabetes shots, he sold his acting boss who offered to help him. He sold his acting boss like one of his merchandise. Does this make sense? Mr. Uh, Castrano was like that. He was never good at violence. He wanted to manage Gambino crime family like a corporation. And he was very greedy. And he didn't want people like Jangari, who has a, this talent that he did not have, who was more violent and tough than himself. They are businessmen and the merchant as their identity. And to me, Mr. Amuso, Mr. Persico, Mr. Jangari, and uh, Mr. Baschiano, who is the youngest, now he is like 60 years old. These four people, okay, Persico, Amuso, Jangari, and uh, Baschiano, these people are gangsters all the way, you know? So I really think as a professional, okay, those who do not know, who, who has never experienced those wars and, you know, those uh, danger zones and stuff like that, shouldn't be placed as a boss, you know? That's not their color and there should be a time that they know they shouldn't have you know so i thought it was interesting you know prosecuting side they didn't care who they really are they thought massino was the last dawn now all i care about is what's inside massino was not Dawn and Castrano was not the Dawn. That's why they killed and they became turncoat. You know, I am not justifying, you know, their violent world. I'm saying that true identity they have to respect when they choose their occupation. You know, otherwise, all the other people. Who work become unhappy and that's what's happening now in Japan too you know not in corporation but in uh, those uh, Yakuza world you know those who has never been in prison like uh, in prison over at least like five years or, you know ten years they are not gangsters you know and uh, they just, uh, you know, uh, kiss, keep kissing asses of the boss who has power so that when the time comes, they can succeed the boss's position. And once they become the boss, they bully all those under him. That is very ugly. I have seen so many scenes as part of my research and uh, it was not the right, not right, under natural, you know, uh, providence. So, in that sense, as a person, I my uh, high respect goes to uh, Mr. Basquiano as the youngest real thing, and Mr. Jangari, who never cried even after he had his own jaw removed by operation because of the cancer he developed, you know. But uh, even under such condition, I read that uh, he never cried, okay. This is, you know, I'm not talking about the type of business or violence or things like that. I'm talking about honor as a person. I was lucky enough to be able to feel that honor from Mr. Amuso, 
Mr. Persico and Mr. Vincent Basquiano directly from them. Although I missed the chance already to contact Mr. John Gotti, but I wish I could have done that. That's uh, pretty much it. I might have talked too much, but uh, I told you the truth. And uh, it's not a business thing, you know, the way person should live. Okay, thank you very much for listening to my minute lecture. And up until next time. You know, I am planning, this time it was like Thug File 27, right? I am planning to go on till Thug File number 50. So we have 23 more to go. So I would like you to uh, expect much more to come to you. Until next time, you have a wonderful day, okay? On your own or with your loved ones. Okay, bye-bye now.